thimerosal, a preservative which was taken out of childhood vaccines a while ago because there was fear it could be linked to autism, is being used in some batches of the H1N1 vaccine. Are you concerned that will keep some parents from having their children vaccinated? Well, we want to make it clear that this is a voluntary vaccination program, but study after study, scientist after scientist has determined that there really is no safety risk with thimerosal. There is concern about parents of why autism rates are rising. And as you know, we've got some special NIH studies, thanks to the president, focused on just what is going on. But thimerosal has been proven to be safe, is used in seasonal vaccine uh, seasonal flu vaccine. And again, we want to assure people that, that uh, the scientists, again, have confirmed uh, that there is really a safe factor with using thimerosal. It's an effective preservative and one that uh, we think actually adds to the likelihood that we'll have a safe vaccine for a while to come. As you know, there's a very small but passionate group of people who are convinced that childhood vaccines in general or the way they're scheduled are connected to autism and other neurodevelopmental disorders. Are you concerned there will be a backlash by that vocal group against this vaccine? Well, I think what, what parents have to understand, and, you know, I'm a mom, I know you're a mom, um, it's certainly the safety and security of our children is of primary importance. It's important to the president. Uh, and what we know is that this disease targets kids uh, so that we want uh, parents to feel comfortable to get their children vaccinated because, unfortunately, uh, seasonal flu year in and year out kills 36,000 people, hospitalizes a couple hundred thousand people. Um, so we are taking every precaution, but based on the science. And the science, again, continues to indicate that the ingredients we're anticipating using in this vaccine are safe to use. Tests will be done. We're going to listen to the science and not release a vaccine until we feel we've got the dosage right and that it's safe and effective for people to to be vaccinated. And um, again, children over age of six months, young adults with underlying health condition, pregnant women, which who unfortunately are dying in larger numbers uh, than in seasonal flu, are affected by this virus. And we think it's important, certainly for health care workers who will be coming in contact with ill people to be at the front of this line. So those are really the priority groups, along with caregivers and parents of infants under six months old. The infants aren't recommended to get the vaccination themselves. So we want to make sure that the caregivers who come in close proximity to those infants actually are at the front of the line for vaccinations. Initially, uh, you had said children between the ages of six months and 18 years, and I've noticed that you have extended that to age 24. Why? Well, we're particularly concerned with students in college dormitory settings. Uh, there is evidence that in college dorms uh, and camp-like settings, this also continues to spread very rapidly. So uh, the age uh, increase really focuses on that target population, but certainly up to age 24 with anyone with underlying health conditions, again, it is strongly recommended to to get the vaccine uh, once it's available. And again, we're targeting mid-October. But Katie, I think what we want to do is remind parents that there's a lot that could be done today as your child is getting ready to go back to school, uh, teaching basic hygiene, making sure that hand washing, which often doesn't happen in a school setting, is part of the daily routine. You know, wash your hands frequently, cough into a handkerchief or a Kleenex or a sleeve. Don't use your hands to cover a cough and sneeze. Uh, and certainly, please keep your children home uh, if they are sick. Uh, I know it's an inconvenience to miss work or find alternative um, daycare arrangements, but this virus spreads very, very quickly. Sending your child to school with the flu introduces the flu to all of his or her playmates and friends. And we're really trying to contain the flu as much as possible until we have a, an effective vaccine available. Since the vaccine won't be available, Madam Secretary, till mid-October, are you worried about significant outbreaks happening when schools start in September? 
Well, what we know is the virus hasn't gone away. Uh, we think we have about a million cases right now. Uh, recently, it was identified that some some kids who are here in Washington paging at the Capitol have caught the flu, and they are staying home uh, and not uh, introducing that flu to members of Congress who we need to continue to work hard until their August recess. Uh, we know it has spread through summer camps and uh, it's likely to present itself when schools reopen. So yes, there, there are concerns, which is again why it's so important to take the basic steps of some social isolation, uh, don't get on an airplane, don't send your child to school, stay home yourself and try to limit how we spread this virus until, again, we have vaccines available. And then hopefully parents will feel comfortable about having their children vaccinated, keeping them safe and secure as we continue on with the school year.